I'm thinking about this woman that, in Colorado that I really like. You know, I'm, I'm thinking about explaining to her first that to me, you're like an air hockey table. I like fighting to the death on the table, you know, like a gladiator. <laughs> this guy hit the throat. I fell in love with air hockey in June of 1973. I picked up the mallet, no glove, didn't know anything about it, won 18 games in a row. There was so much energy going through my body of air hockey greatness that my arm just, you know, it was too much. These people are more intense than that. What do you think, honey, of the air hockey crowd? I won't say anything. <laughs> There's a lot of individuals in air hockey. They have unique interests and they're not a real mainstream. Men, traditionally competitive, typically not in relationships with women, kind of loners, you know, kind of in love with the table and maybe married to the table, I don't know. I used to play air hockey every day. I'd play 30, 40 games a day. I would just play air hockey. That's what I like to do. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Mark feels like he has to make sure that air hockey is not going to die, to make sure that when he is dead, air hockey will continue living. I think the extinction of air hockey is a very real concern. The arcades are virtually extinct these days. Unless somebody is, is able to come in and do some really radical marketing, you know, it, it may not be around. We have wives, we have jobs, we have things that we can spend our money on rather than coming to Vegas to play air hockey. So there's definitely something about air hockey that's keeping us going. We're really starting to reach out and connect the fan base to the sponsor base to the player base. Oh, you got to the under! Like the win, 16 to 3! Perfect! In the moment of playing air hockey, there is no misery. Playing air hockey. Why they have jump rope and things like that on ESPN and not air hockey, it's kind of beyond me. Yeah.